Marie Kondo ending the program there with more top tips. Thanks for being with us on BBC News. Live from London, this is BBC News. Guatemala's new president is sworn in after hours of delay in what his supporters say was a last-ditch attempt to keep him from power. Republican voters in Iowa prepare to cast the first votes in the 2024 presidential caucus, as polls show Donald Trump holding a commanding lead. Amid rising tensions in the Middle East, Rishi Sunak is to address Parliament over the UK's decision to join the US in military action in Yemen. And several homes have been set on fire after two volcanic fissures erupted in southwest Iceland. This is the scene live in the fishing town of Grindavik, where defences have partially contained some of the lava flow. Hello, I'm Anna Foster. We start with some breaking news. Guatemala's president, Bernardo Arevalo, has been sworn in after many hours of delay caused by wrangling among opposition lawmakers in Congress. Well, here he is addressing the nation. Mr. Arevalo won the election back in August and vowed to get rid of corruption. But that has been repeatedly challenged by a judiciary seen as loyal to the outgoing government. Earlier, his supporters converged on the chamber, accusing delegates of a last-ditch attempt to keep him out of office. Mr. Arevalo has faced numerous legal challenges to his overwhelming election win. He's described those as a coup attempt by vested interests in the corruption-ravaged country. Frank, thank you. Frank Gardner there, our security correspondent with the latest on the situation in Yemen. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Analysis from a UK transport safety charity suggests that very few injuries involving e-scooters are being reported to the police. John Donison reports. You're live with BBC News. China's top diplomat has warned that any steps towards Taiwan's independence will be severely punished. It follows the election of William Lai as the island's new president. He is viewed by Beijing as a dangerous separatist. Speaking during a visit to Egypt, China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi, had this to say. Finally for now, I've got some pictures to show you of a rare white penguin, which was filmed in the icy climate of the Chilean Antarctic earlier this month. Uh, it's a female from the Gen 2 species, normally, of course, distinguished by its black and white feathers. Um, it's beautiful with those mostly white feathers. It's due to leucism. It's a genetic condition caused by a partial loss of plumage pigmentation. And while it looks very striking, it's a rare condition, but it could actually expose it to being more easily hunted by predators. Now, we're going to be following uh, those Iowa caucuses in the US throughout the day today here on BBC News. And if you have a look on the BBC News website as well, you can follow all the latest on that on our live page. Stay with us here on BBC News. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Live from London, this is BBC News. Tensions in the Red Sea escalate. The US says it shot down a missile fired from Houthi militant areas of Yemen targeted at a US destroyer. As world leaders from business and politics gather in Davos, a call for governments to rein in the power of billionaires, we speak to the boss of Oxfam. 
Beating Blue Monday. The latest research shows only one in four Brits are happy at work. We'll hear some expert tips on how to beat the blues. Plus the art of organizing. I talked to Marie Kondo, the Japanese businesswoman who's made a fortune from decluttering. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock. We're looking at the top business stories, starting with the latest on global supply chains that are facing severe disruption in the Red Sea. The US military says its forces shot down a cruise missile fired at an American destroyer warship from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen on Sunday. This latest attack appears to be the first against a US destroyer and comes as the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak prepares to brief Parliament today on Friday's military action in Yemen. The UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron is saying the UK is prepared to back our words with actions against the Houthis. Peter Sand is Chief Analyst at Zanetta, an ocean and air freight analytics platform. I asked him for uh, his data on how this has affected trade so far. Archana Shukla there. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. With BBC News. Now, today is known as Blue Monday. This was coined by psychologist Cliff Arnold in 2004. It falls on the third Monday in January every year. And this year, the IT company HP's New Work Relationship Index reveals some startling statistics. Its global workplace study has found that only one in four Brits are happy at work. I spoke to the entrepreneur and mentor Deborah Meaden, asking her why most workers in the UK are unhappy. It was very nice to meet her. That was Marie uh, Kondo there sharing her top tips. Let's quickly look at financial markets. So we mentioned one of the big events was the fact that the uh, People's Republic of China Central Bank kept interest rates on hold uh, today on Wall Street, there's no action at all. It's a public holiday for Martin Luther King Day. You can see the price of oil edging up a little again today. It was up some 4% on Friday, just going over $80 a barrel at one point. This was following the uh, military action in Yemen on the part of the UK and US. You're up to date. I'll see you soon. From London, this is BBC News. The US shoots down a missile fired towards one of its ships from Yemen after the US and UK launch strikes on Houthi targets in the country. Hamas says it will reveal what happened to three Israeli hostages shown in a video published on Sunday. Republican voters in Iowa prepared to cast the first votes in the 2024 presidential caucus as polls show Donald Trump holding a commanding lead. Guatemala's new president is sworn in after hours of delay in what his supporters say was a last-ditch attempt to keep him from power. And several homes have been set on fire after two volcanic fissures erupted in southwest Iceland. This is the scene live in the fishing town of Grindavik, where defences have partially contained some of the lava flow. Hello, I'm Anna Foster. The UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak will make a statement to Parliament later explaining the decision to take part in raids in Yemen alongside the US military. He's faced criticism from some parties for not giving MPs an opportunity to discuss it before the strikes happened. It comes in the context of rising tension across the Middle East since the start of the Gaza conflict. Here's our political correspondent, Leila Nathu. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.
You're live with BBC News. China's top diplomat has warned that any steps towards Taiwan's independence will be severely punished. It follows the election of William Lai as the island's new president. He is viewed by Beijing as a dangerous separatist. Speaking during a visit to Egypt, China's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi, had this to say. And Bjorn, I know you're uh, heading back there now to uh, continue your photography work. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. Do stay safe, won't you? And thank you for sharing those uh, extraordinary images as well that you were seeing on your screen there as uh, Bjorn was speaking. Some of those drone shots that he's been taking in the town of uh, Grindavik. As we were saying, several houses set on fire there, a building buried under the molten rock. And the government is going to meet later on today to discuss measures to try and house some of those evacuated residents. Stay with us here on BBC News. Hello there. We've got real contrast north to south across Europe at the